good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of El Salvador. As you can see here, El Salvador is in Central America. It has a big long coastline with the Pacific Ocean and it's the only country in Central America that does not border the Caribbean. El Salvador has part of the Gulf of Fonseca down here, not much of it. It's kind of a dispute with Honduras, but we'll get to that in the Honduras episode. And El Salvador lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire. It's very seismically active. El Salvador has had quite a few massive earthquakes, but even more so, it has a lot of volcanoes. This little country it's the smallest in Central America, and it's one of its nicknames is the Thumb of Central America because it's kind of shaped like a thumb. But it has around 20 or so volcanoes. Nearly all of them are active, and they line pretty much along this big mountain chain right here. All of the major cities you see, like Santa Ana, the capital San Salvador, San Vicente, San Miguel, along with many others, are at the base of a volcano and that's because the soil around a volcano is very fertile so you can get some good planting there so pretty much all of the major cities in El Salvador are at the base of a volcano most of which are active um, San Miguel is the most active volcano in El Salvador and there's also a lot of rivers flowing through El Salvador the most important one, I'm not really sure you can see it on this map actually, but it kind of flows around through here and out to here. Yeah, it's not on this map at all, but it's called the Lempa River. It flows pretty much all throughout El San, San Salvador, through El Salvador. And um, this lake right here is Lake Ilopango, which is along the river there. It's the I believe that's the largest lake in El Salvador. I didn't double check that fact. Um, but like I alluded to, there's a lot of big mountains up here in the highlands. It drops down to the more beachy coast area here. And then the rest of El Salvador um, is quite mountainous. It's part of the Sierra Madre mountain chain. Um, but it's, it's part of its history is that it was very over-farmed, so the soil here is not as rich as it is in the highlands up here. So it's considered more of the poorer, lesser part of El Salvador. But it also has a lot of the rainforest in El Salvador. And there's actually a big national park right up here, right where El Salvador meets Guatemala and Honduras. It's known as El Trifinio, because it's at those three points. Um, but within that park is the Monte Cristo Cloud Forest, and also the highest peak in El Salvador is right about here, so also not labeled on this map. It is Cerro El Pital, and it's not a volcano, weirdly enough. One of the few peaks in El Salvador that is not going to erupt with lava anytime soon. Uh, there's also a really cool national park down in here that's known as the El Imposible National Park, which is a really great name. But as you can imagine, the rainforest, or the cloud forest, I suppose, in El Salvador is home to so much plant life and animal life. All the typical finds you see in Central America. We'll look at some pictures in this book after we go over the history. But I forgot to mention that this border here is with Guatemala. This border here is with Honduras the only countries it borders and like I said it has that like three corners peak here where the three countries meet up and it's a protected area so yeah in a nutshell that's basically the geography of El Salvador so let's get into the history the earliest tribe would have been established here around 7000 BCE they were known as the Lenca tribe, but um, over time the Olmecs would live in this corner of Central America, same with the Mayans. In fact, 
the Mayans built a city called Hazumal right about here or so. But the predominant native peoples would have arrived around 800 CE, and they were known as the Pipil. And they made contact with the Spanish in the early 1500s. They did not get along. They were very warlike against them, uh, mostly because the Spanish brought smallpox to their population. And also the Spanish were very adamantly looking for gold, which is pretty much not in this area of Central America. In 1524, Pedro de Alvarado attacked the people here as he was looking for gold. The people fought back. They actually managed to drive him out at one point, but he came back with more men and more guns and ammunition. And the native peoples here really did not stand a chance. Uh, colonization would have begun in 1528, and for a while the main export was indigo, which is a plant used to make indigo dye. It was like the the color in Europe at the time. In 1609, the Kingdom of Guatemala was founded. It was part of the Viceroyalty of New Spain. It was pretty much nearly all of the countries you see throughout Central America. But independence movements started to spring up around 1811, and in 1821, uh, Guatemala City was the head of it. They officially declared independence and created what's known, what was known as the Federal Republic of Central America, which was supposed to be modeled after the United States in a way, but each country had its own president and government, like Congress, Senate, things like that. Um, but there was a, a little moment where Mexico, who had declared its own independence, was like, hey, just join us and beat Mexico. And they said, no, there's a conflict, but um, we'll most likely get to that when we get to Mexico. The Federation eventually broke apart due to a lot of conflict of interests, among other things. In uh, 1841, and El Salvador joined with Honduras and Nicaragua to form their own mini version called the Greater Republic of Central America, but that also dissolved in 1898. Uh, this is a brief history and a relaxing one, so I won't get too into all of the political turmoil happening in El Salvador at the time, but I will say that um, indigo came and went, especially since this is, you know high in the Industrial Revolution, and they could just manufacture indigo dye, right? So the main export then became coffee, and the coffee industry was essentially run by just like a group of families, and they wound up creating an oligarchy, which is when a family or a group or even one person has so much money and influence over a country that they essentially run the country. So all of the infrastructure that was built was centered around the coffee industry. All of the laws were centered around making coffee more profitable and putting more money into rich people's pockets. And essentially the poor wound up incredibly suppressed. Uh, elections were staged, there were assassinations, and after a while, communism started to become popular among the poor peoples in El Salvador. And in 1932, there was a peasant uprising over here, and that led to La Mantanza, which is known as the Massacre. And essentially, the like military police, I suppose you would call them, uh, went and just massacred people who they considered guerrillas or guerrilla supporters or communist or communist sympathizers, but they really didn't seem to make any kind of distinction. Tens of thousands of people lost their lives. And due to this instability, many people from El Salvador crossed the border to Honduras, and essentially squatted over there. Those events led to what was known as the Football War of 1969. It only lasted four days, thankfully. But things really came to a head in 1974, when a presidential election was highly disputed, 
It led to a junta in 1979, and that started the big civil war. And it was essentially the oligarchy versus the guerrillas. And since many guerrillas were communist or communist sympathizers, that means the United States government backed the government of El Salvador and gave them money and weapons. And that money and weapons went to killing many, many innocent lives. There was one event in particular in 1981 called the El Mozote Massacre, where nearly whole villages were just wiped out randomly for no apparent reason. Otherwise, it was suspected there might be guerrillas there. And the government denied that it happened because they wanted to keep getting U.S. money. And the U.S. wanted to support anti-communists, so the U.S. also denied that it happened, even though many agencies came in after the war and proved that it definitely did happen. There was also, um, it was it was a really rough time. It was just 12 years of just total turbulence. There were, you know, the, the death squads backed by the government. There was one event in particular when um, Archbishop Oscar Romero, who um, was very much opposed to the Catholic Church's position, their stance on it all. They were supporting the government, so he was very outspoken, and he was assassinated while giving a sermon. He's now, um, I was about to say he's considered a saint. He's literally a saint now, as appointed by Pope Francis. But it, it was a very, very rough time, and uh, what really uh, made international news, finally, and outraged people were some American nuns were killed in a very horrific way that I'm not going to get into on this channel. I would be super demonetized. Like, not just demonetized, but super demonetized. <laughs> But it outraged the international community, and the UN got involved, and they started the ball rolling on peace talks. And in 1992, the Civil War officially ended, but it ended at basically where it was at the very start. The same people were in power. Uh, the only real difference was that the guerrillas now had a political party, which would wind up becoming one of the two main political parties. But the government granted amnesty to literally anyone involved in the mass slaughters and things like that, which made people very, very, very upset. Uh, another big issue at this time, many Salvadorans fled to the United States, in particular Los Angeles, which I believe is one of, if not the largest Salvadoran population outside of El Salvador. And gang violence ensued there which um, I don't think I can talk about on YouTube. Again, that would be a pretty big strike in the uh, demonetization category, I suppose, but that gang starts with MS, ends with a certain number. I think you know what I mean. But um, once they were arrested in the United States, they were deported back to El Salvador, where the gang violence just continued as it was just in their home country. And that led to a lot, lot, lot of really intense gang violence among the gangs there. But things started to change in 2019. Like I said, there were two main political parties. One was essentially the old guard and one was backed by the uh, like old guerrilla fighters from the Civil War. In 2019, a person from the third party was elected. His name's Naib Bukele. And, like, essentially, he's like a bro. Like, you know, he likes to wear his backwards baseball hat. He calls himself the coolest dictator in the world. And I feel like, I don't know this for sure, this is a personal opinion, but I think he's the kind of guy that would get along with, like, Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro. Folks like that. Folks of that persuasion politically. His big thing right now is that he has made Bitcoin an official currency of El Salvador. And his big plan at, the, at this point is to make a town on the side of a volcano, you know, like they do. That's not an unusual thing in El Salvador. It kind of is if you're not familiar with its geography. It sounds kind of wild to just build a town beside a volcano, but that's the norm here. He wants to build this town to use the geothermal power of a volcano to mine Bitcoin and make it like a city of the future, where it's all centered around Bitcoin, which I'm not 
not going to say my personal opinion about Bitcoin. <laughs> Just let's say that I'm not really in favor of it. Uh, but I'm not like 100% against it. I just don't think that a cryptocurrency should be an official currency. You know, that seems a little, a little dangerous. But in a nutshell, that is the history of El Salvador. So let me flip through this book for you and show you all the wonderful pictures. El Salvador is a very beautiful country. It's a lovely person right on the cover there. There's a big old volcano. Let's see what we've got. He's got some very happy faces. Oh, almost all happy faces. He doesn't look too happy to be in the picture. Let's see. Here is a doctor here, a little like village doctor, checking up on patients. This is at the root of peace, like a little tourist path you can take to learn about El Salvador history. These are some of these gang members that I talked about, and these are some military men doing some drills, but here's the absolutely gorgeous landscape. Look at the rich plant life in the mountains, the big blue sky, it's a very beautiful place. Here is San Salvador, you can see the big volcano in the back, it's very imposing. And this is San Miguel volcano erupting. This was taken in 2013, it says. Here's another, what I like to call cartoon volcanoes. This is Izalco Volcano. And here is Lake Coatepeque, the largest crater lake. Oh, it was a large crater lake. I misread that, but yeah. We've got some sweet cattle doing some grazing. Here is Tazumal, the old Mayan city. We've got a tapir, really sweet little animals. And I've never heard of this bird before reading this book. It's a toucan. It's a toucan, but little, a toucan. It's very, very colorful. Look at all the colors in its beak. Here is another shot of San Salvador. You can see this really beautiful colonial style church right in the middle of the city. And this is Santa Ana, another major city. Here's another picture of Tazumal. I wonder if they're on like a field trip or something. In their school uniforms. Look at this from the Tazumal Museum. Isn't that really great little handicraft there? This is a PPL person on a day of the world's indigenous peoples, it says. Wearing a fantastic headdress there. And the beautiful looks like pheasant feathers of some kind. Here is Pedro de Alvarado, one of the big colonizers of the area. And here is a painting. It's pretty much going to be in every book about Central America that I have. Celebrating the independence. This is a memorial for the El Mozote massacre. We have government soldier during the Civil War. We've got some graffiti here. Let's see. Yankee aggressors. Like, go home, basically. Get out of El Salvador. Yeah. Get out of El Salvador. And here's another memorial. It's the Monument to Memory and Truth. And here's, sadly, a 12-year-old involved in gang violence. And this was the president at the time this book came out, uh, Salvador Sanchez Seren. He was from the FMLN, which was the party that was uh, backed by the guerrilla fighters. And in fact, he was a major guerrilla fighter himself. There he is again, looking very happy there. We've got some soldiers in a ceremony. You can see the coat of arms, El Salvador on the flag there. It says the National Civil Police searching for gang members. We've got human rights activists demanding justice for the massacres. And election day, casting a vote. Let's see, we've got a very happy man. 
says he works for in the tourist industry. And they're cleaning some plantains. Let's see. Sitting on the roofs above a poor neighborhood. And he's raking some coffee beans. It's a big industry. People waiting for free breakfast. And another coffee worker ready to fill up a bag full of coffee beans. building a new section of highway. It's a scene that's very common in California where you live. You see highway construction like that all the time. So here's something I didn't really mention was that El Salvador adopted the US dollar as its official currency. This was like way before the whole Bitcoin thing. This was in 2001 it says. So this is a protest against that but it did indeed happen. Says she's sewing pajamas for Walmart in a factory. And he's leaving the money, Graham, getting some remittances from a family member outside of the country. A very beautiful blue hair and lovely, lovely, lovely. I really like water birds. I don't know why. I think they just have a really cute shape. The long necks and long legs. I don't know what it is about water birds. I just think they're neat deforestation. As you can see the effects here. What happens when all the trees get removed. They're in Lake Ilopongo, which talks about how it's highly contaminated. So, you know, people don't really have a choice. They have to do their laundry somewhere. Let's see. A protest against... Let's see. It says mining up here. I'm reading the signs. No fast track. Pacific Rim out of El Salvador. Water, yes, gold, no. And some of the pollution here, they're going through the dump. And some of the air pollution as well. Let's see, there's some environmentalists doing a demonstration for World Water Day, it says. And some reforestation efforts. Oh, cool. He's doing a sick trick right there. This is on Go Skateboarding Day. That's pretty cool. Let's see, a PPL woman. What is she doing? Oh, doing a part of a ceremony. I really like her headdress. Her skull cap. I'm not sure what it would be called, but yeah. There's some sisters. It's looking very sweet. This is... It says it's in Washington, D.C. Some Salvadoran people attending story time. Oh. Very wonderful face there. There's a shanty little house made out of corrugated metal. And a bird's eye view of the slum. Very sad conditions. Look at this big old pig. My goodness. She's feeding her pig. Big pigs. And this is up in a mountain village, a little rural town. Let's see at the health center, checking up on patients. And going for a walk. Looks like they're walking home from school, maybe walking to school. Oh, look at this. This is a for International Day of the Elimination of Violence Against Women. She's made of a beautiful sign commemorating someone important to her. And El Salvador is one of those countries that offer these free laptops to children. I forget. It was somewhere in South America. Was it Ecuador? Where they were like big on... I think it was Ecuador. Or Bolivia. One of those. Where they're handing out these free laptops to all the children. Which is a great thing. Let's see. Oh dear. Nervously waiting on a bus after gangs threatened violence against public transportation. That is very, very worrisome. Look at this great statue. So of course, El Salvador meaning the savior. So we've got a big statue commemorating the Christian savior, Jesus Christ. It's heading on top of the world there. Here is Oscar Romero. It's a six months before he was killed. I think whenever I do my like 
because I really want to do a series on like national heroes. He would definitely be the one for El Salvador. Really beautiful shrine here to the Virgin Mary. Attending Mass and it's Ash Wednesday, you can tell. Yes, abortion legal. It's International Day for Action of the Decriminalization of Abortion. And they have a lot of international days that they very fervently recognize, don't they? Here's a statue for Oscar Romero. Some really wonderful Aztec art, it says here. Very beautiful. Language of the Newspaper there. Of course, reporting some really sad news there. There's Hernan Cortez meeting Montezuma of the Aztecs. What else do we have? Beautiful mur mural of Archbishop Romero. Checking out the art museum there. Some absolutely gorgeous little statuettes. Very cool. I like all these little details that's been in the art, in the in the native art. You can really tell that someone like pushed their fingernails in the clay. It's neat. This really beautiful cathedral where this mural was painted and um, it says this is where Archbishop Oscar Romero's remains are and the government tried to take down the mural and of course people were very upset by that. Playing some instruments there in a parade Really beautiful modern art there. It's selling some hammocks, it says. Very, very brightly colored. And he's got a bookstore, book vendor kind of thing going on there. That's like a lot of books. Playing some music in the park. And here's the Teatro Nacional, the National Theater. Oof, jumping off the waterfall. And of course, you know, football is like the sport of the area, right? This is talking about the soccer war. And um, it's called that because, you know, there was a lot of political tension between the countries, but then they played each other as part of a World Cup preliminary and the fans got into a big violent to-do and it turned into like an all-out war. El Salvador invaded Honduras. But like I said, it only lasted four days, thankfully, because the international community or the the OAS, the Organization of American States, got in there and stopped it before it could become even worse. Playing in Lake Ilopongo, which again, this points out, is heavily polluted. Oh, wow. Very cool big old devil mask for this parade. Having a good dance during the Senior Citizen what else do we have? Oh, they're playing some checkers. That's so fun. And doing some surfing on the ocean. Oh, another wonderful face there. She's in the palm, the palm, the flower festival. Oh, that's where I saw it. Flower and palm festival. So I was kind of right. Oh, they're doing those. Oh, what is that called? We call it color guard here. I don't know if that's what it's called there, but you like flip the rifles. There's like a specific word for it. I forgot it. Anyway. A... Wow, that's a lot of Jesus is there during the procession. Big parade. A big casket for Samana Santa. Great balls of fire. Now, I get to throw fireballs at each other and paint their faces. Oh, look at it. It's Christmas pageant. Awesome. And this is a relic now of Oscar Romero because, like I said, he was officially canonized as a saint, so his shirt there officially becomes a relic. Oop, she's making some pupusas. Oh my gosh, yummy, yummy. <laughs> oh, she's got some fish to sell. And she's making some tortillas. 
Listen, we all know tortillas are delicious, right? But have you ever had one that's just been freshly made and it's still warm? It's like a religious experience. It's so good. Some juice is getting blended there. And some tamales. Yum, yum, yum. I'm glad I live in a, in a place in the world where um, people just sell like tamales out of their homes. <laughs> it's awesome. Ooh, fruit salad juice. Mm, very interesting. Fruit salad in a cup. Sweet cheese pound cake. Quesadilla salvadoreña. That looks really good too. And then we have this really good map here where you can really see all of the major volcanoes in the area. And there's the, the high peak that wasn't on the map. Oh, and here's the river, right? So I was like, the river is straight up and not on here. The Rio Lampa. That flows all down through here out into the ocean. There, I'm glad you could see it. Let's end the video there for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I've got another video about El Salvador for you tomorrow. It's a whisper video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Again, thank you for watching. I do hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, good, good